Okay, welcome back to our lecture on the final, the art impulse for Unit 9, the intimist impulse, and we were just talking about Vuillard and talking about this group of um, who kind of formed the sort of intimism school. Um, so here's some more images of, from Vuillard. Vuillard is one of my favorite painters. It's a beautiful Vuillard, um, kind of a um, uh, kind of a living room scene, very similar kind of interior. There's a very beautiful one at the St. Louis Art Museum that I have gone to see and studied and sketched from many a time. Um, two artists who are kind of loosely associated with this group, less because their art looks like it was, you know, similar, um, and more just because they are thinking about similar subject matter and because they were, you know, uh, relatively aware of each other. Um, painting at the same time and painting in France. This is uh, Durant and Balthus. And so at the same time, we also have, um, like Durant, who was, you know, part of the Fovis group, right? And then as his art went in its own direction, it started to have this more intimate, more um, family and domestic and, and internal personal world uh, kind of focus. The same happened with Matisse and in a very different way in that the look is quite different, very much more uh, focused on design, but in terms of subject matter there's this kind of like uh, this interest in the, the internal and the personal world. And then that brings us back to Bonnard and you know like I've said before many times in this class I love Bonnard, one of my favorite painters of all time. Um, and I just uh, want to pause just for a second on, on these paintings because I think I skipped over them really fast on the art historical part. One of the things to know about these bather um, paintings by Bonnard is that the model for, for these uh, was his wife. And um, by the time we get to the ones uh, in the 30s, I believe his, you know, they were an older couple by that point. I think his wife was about 60 at that point. Um, and what's interesting is that he's all the way through all these different kind of bather paintings that he did with her. Um, he's always painting her as if she's, you know, um, in her early twenties. And there's something very kind of personal and intimate just about that, about how, um, his kind of his love, admiration for her, uh, the way he saw her, um, not, you know, saw her for, for for, you know, as he remembered her, is itself a very kind of personal and intimate kind of experience. So um, now we're going to talk about some other examples post, uh, post kind of like the, the 30s and 40s, where we see a similar kind of artist focusing on uh, kind of personal life, focusing on more intimate sort of images, someone like Devencorn. Um, I think we definitely see that with someone like Mirandi. Um, I also included the Fantin Latour here just to kind of get at that idea that sometimes just a still life itself can be a little glimpse of of a personal world. Um, and I think that's especially true of uh, uh, Mirandi and his paintings. They're intimate in, in multiple ways. I mean, one of the ways they're intimate is just in scale and intimate in how quiet they are, just compositionally and quiet in terms of color. Um, and they do seem very much like almost like a abstract portraits of of life. And I think we can see a certain amount of interest in intimacy just in on a purely abstract sense, right? Just like I was talking about with Mirandi, if you could take that same idea and just remove all representation whatsoever, I think you would get to images something like this that both Rothko and uh, Sujimoto are um, in similar ways, kind of uh, getting at something, you know, a type of quietness that itself can be intimate. But let's uh, talk a little bit more about artists, you, you know, still exploring family life and personal life. So here we have Sally Mann, um, and hers are very, um, very intimate, but also very kind of like um, uh, searching there and uh, and willing to, to look for, uh, and there's also kind of this element of provocation, like, you know, the child holding the candy cigarette 
Um, and of course, in the photograph, it doesn't necessarily look like a candy cigarette. Uh, another photographer who, a project that she did kind of at the an earlier part of her career where um, she really made it all about um, kind of an intimate look at her family and her set of friends. Um, I, can't, I don't know how many photographs, but they were all taken pretty much in the same format and of the same view with the, you know, the lamp over the table and, but all these different changes of, of characters, um, everyone in her life. And they are extremely intimate. And then we have someone like Nan Golden, where the artwork is not just intimate, but kind of almost confessional, right? It's about like um, so, things that are so personal that you know most people would keep them as secrets. Or looking at someone else's life in that kind of really kind of scathing but personal sort of way. And then here's another. It, Thing I think we see in, in contemporary art that relates to this topic, and that is the idea of the diaristic. Uh, there are a lot of artists who make kind of diaristic art. It's a common thing to see a young artist do sort of like, you know, for a period of their life, do like a painting a day or a drawing a day. Um, you see this done, you know, on, on social media sites a lot. Um, one artist who did a really fantastic project kind of based off of that is Zach Smith, where he did this piece where uh, for every page of the um, Thomas Pynchon's novel, uh, Gravity's Rainbow, he would read each page and then distill one thing or one kind of image that represents that page, and he would do a drawing for each page. Um, and, you know, it's a practically a thousand page book. So it's a lot of small drawings in this massive installation based off of it. And I think that kind of diaristic approach for a lot of artists leads to a kind of like a confessional sort of thing. Not, I don't think necessarily for the Zach Smith piece, uh, since he was more focused outward, focusing on someone else's uh, literature. But we definitely see that kind of confessional um, approach to personal life in artwork like by someone like Tracy Emin, where um, this piece, Tent, and then she did a follow-up piece called Bed, and Tent Inside the tent, she has him kind of uh, sewn on, embroidered, uh, the names of every single person uh, that she's ever slept with. And, you know, I don't know whether you interpret that as, as confessional or just sheer bravado. Um, and I think now, thinking about it from this point of view of this theme, we can see Portrait of Ross in a slightly different way. I mean, it's, it's an interesting work of art on a conceptual level in that it is getting us to think about art in a totally different way, getting us to think about art as an act that we participate in and through us participating in that happens. Without us participating, it's not really a work of art. So there's, there's a whole levels of interesting conceptual aspects to the work, but there's also this, this aspect of kind of a personal glimpse to someone else's life. And I think it's that, that kind of a, a glimpse into someone's, you know, very, um, deep personal, almost secret part of their life that's part of the power of the piece. And so here's a piece that is, um, is relates to that theme. And it relates to it in the, the sense that this is a work of art that uh, Marina Abramovich made that wasn't necessarily going to be about anything all that personal. Oop, that's my one minute warning. So I think this is my last image. So I'm going to wrap it up. But in the, the performance of this piece, her ex-husband, who she hadn't seen for 15 years, not just ex-husband, actually, I don't think they were actually married, but ex-partner, both um, you know, personal partner as well as art partner, showed up. And in this piece, what she had to do was anyone who came in, she had to sit and just look back at them for as long as they wanted. Um, and so in this one piece, it became an extremely personal event. All right. Thanks.